Welcome to another episode Sailing Ruby Rose. It is one minute to 10, so you will hear the buzz in a minute. Lots to show you today. This guy behind me, just there, carpenter. Down there, more carpenters. And now what I want to show you about today is a whole heap of stuff where they've moved from essentially building boat one, which was very much the prototype, which is obviously they're trying all these different things out, to moving to production and upscaling production. So we've got a lot of different bays in the shipyard that are dealing with different things. So for instance, in this bay alone, there are five or six carbon coach roofs, all of which will be fitted. There's a 10 o'clock bell. Gives me my 10 minutes to talk without disturbing the workers. So, lots to show you. Keep watching. This is going to be an amazing one. Hello, hello, hello. Now I'm running out of soul. Good morning, one and all. Welcome to Saigon Shipyard. I wanted to kind of show you some processes today. The carpentry stations and the fact that there are now, because of there are so many bays. If you look up, you've got bay there, bay there, and bay there. So there's like four or five different bays and each of them now have specific, specific roles to play. The bay that I'm in now is, it holds holes one to four. So there are four holes there, but also there are four carbon coach roofs waiting to be fitted. Whole heap of area over there, which is now dedicated to just lockers, small, small fiberglass parts, and they're all stacked up. So in the whole movement from making boat one to getting a production line going where the parts just need to be fitted, there's real progress here. I want to take you through and show you some parts of the factory that you haven't seen yet. And those are related to small part construction where you are going to see where the little bits go because there are a lot of work just before, just because we're looking at hole one and just because you're seeing hole one with like progress going on it doesn't mean that behind the scenes they're not working and doing a whole heap of work look at this instance. solar panels the flexible ones that are going to go on different parts of the coach route this is bay one so in bay one we have five holes but they are now infused, they've got six, seven, eight in a second bay, and they've got other hulls being infused today. So there is a whole heap of equipment. There's a whole, all the parts are kind of like put into different areas for fitting. So for instance, here, just under here, we have locker lids for this hull. So all the locker lids are ready to be fitted. Again, it's all done in parts. And again, here, talking about carbon coach roofs. One, two, Three, four being infused. So there's a lot of these carbon parts. I'm actually gonna take some time to answer some questions from our patrons. There are so many questions that we get asked. I'm gonna ask, answer one technical and one non-technical. Technical question that everyone asks or from John Till is, are these lights gonna be dimmable? Are all those lights in the cockpit gonna be dimmable? The answer is, yeah, they can be. I think it's actually an option to have dimmable lights. We have gone with dimmable lights because it was super important to us. Second question from, again, one of our patrons, Rob, is, are you taking crew on board? Yes, of course we're taking crew on board. As yet, we do not know where the boat is going to be delivered. It's looking like Europe, but again, to be confirmed. But as soon as we get a boat, we will be taking our patrons sailing. That is something that we promised them and we will continue to do so. And there will be numerous sailing opportunities for our patrons the coming years, irrespective of where we are in the world. Whether we're in Europe, whether we're in the Americas, whether we're in the Caribbean, whether we're in the South Pacific, you will all be welcome to come and join us. So if you're interested in that, there's a little link up there. Join us on Patreon. It's pretty cheap, pretty nice, pretty free, and you get loads of perks as well as just the potential for joining us sailing. So this is a, it's the same shipyard with different part of the, the factory. And this is where all the small parts are made. Now, if you remember from episodes that we filmed months ago, like these are the small inserts that go into the hull. So this will be the liners for the hulls. But as far as you can see, I mean, this, this is a huge, huge area. All these little parts are being made, all kind of slot together so that it becomes a process which is far more kind of like almost like Lego, where the parts are made. Now that they are clearly onto hull eight or nine, everything is ramping up and with 80, eight or 89 of these hulls already sold, there is a lot to take in. So like I say, the infusion of small parts is completely covered in this bay. And then at the very end, you've got materials 
so where all their materials are kept. So it's pretty interesting and there's lots of things. For instance, here, just behind me, you can see they're making another targa arch. I'm just like blown away with how this has moved from essentially what you could probably describe as a couple of blokes in a shed, which is how just about all boats are built to like a pretty competent series of construction bays where everything now becomes you know methodically put together so yeah another part of the factory where they're making the small parts and i am now going to go and film some other bits for you so keep watching so as we gently ease our way into another episode let's have a look on the progress of hull one the wheels were in place last time but now they've been removed so they can start on the electrical systems obviously there is a lot of navigational equipment here and all the nmea 2000 cables and the networking cables that will be run up the mast and around the boat need to be put in place and having had experience with nmea backbones and cables this is actually a very very complicated piece of kit so this has already started so it's nice to see all that let's have a spin round looking at the other helm now this for us will be the main helm so it is where the plotter will be we will also have the throttle controls we are having those electronic throttle controls and again all this will be very very clearly set out so that we can raise anchor navigate use the vhf radio control the boat all from this area moving down into uh, the port side hull and obviously i do want to apologize for the workers they were doing some work which was pretty time sensitive at this point and so they were still in place i think where things have to be bonded and glued they actually work through the break so we are looking at where the sink will be this has been dry fitted so the sink will be here the vanity unit in the heads and again this looks very similar to the area where the sink was and is in the 1260s so again looking at Miriong's designs for the head in the master cabin this is once again going to be something something of beauty so we look forward to seeing that a very very large shower stall a seat in the shower cubicle which is actually really super important if you are in a seaway this is the port side hull and there's so much woodwork going on here and I'll talk you through all this but what you can see here it's gonna kind of squeeze down here today these drawers have gone in so these drawers these aren't fronted and they will all be on runners, but you can see that now you're starting to get drawers going in and there's a lot of work with the team here, the carpentry team, in making sure that this is all put together. So again, as I look down here, oh, just my knees, God, at 51 years of age, I need to take more cod liver oil. Drawers, drawers, drawers. So you now know that you've actually got pull out drawers, that these aren't simply just like storage bins. Also, now you have this walk-in wardrobe these small inserts have gone in let's move on to look at other aspects of this boat and we will start off obviously with the starboard hull so a quick jaunt up the companionway steps past the mdf of the nav station and we duck down into the starboard hull and again in this hull we have a heads we have this aft cabin and what i would like you to see here is the windows the port lights are going in they have been glassed in we can also see all the mechanisms underneath for easy access to the backing plates for the winches and the clutches so again absolutely amazing to see easy access it is something that as you own a boat you are going to find absolutely necessitous to be able to access under the berth here what you can see is the amount of space that is left empty now this is a void now there are going to be times when you're going to want to put things like suitcases in here and what we have at the front is those sliding drawers that will come out as an option so for us again it is all about storage and as i keep mentioning when i talk about storage it is storage by volume not by weight we will be keeping everything very very light so i will be putting two or three pairs of my underpants into here and this area we will probably use for things like bags, hold alls, where we have no use for them in the everyday. But again, it is big enough to put a bloody jacuzzi in. And I'm not sure we'll ever use it for its jacuzzi style. But it's nice to see that if we have large and unwieldy items, 
that need to be stowed this is where we'll put them moving forward a little bit this bulkhead there is going to be storage here and then moving forward to the second guest cabin the templating has been put in for the steps so here what we've got as we've already mentioned these are just mock-ups of the storage bins now these bins actually kind of come out on hinges allow for a lot of storage and we've also got the steps that lead up to the berth now these are just templated they will be faced as we kind of like go to the final the final product we are able to see at this point how we can step up and how the guests our many guests our many patron guests that are going to be coming on board will be able to get in store their possessions and also sleep soundly now moving on to the deck and our fantastic drone shot of what we're doing here you can see the hatches have now been put in we have got something which to me is super important gas struts on opening hatches and those flush mounted hatches so that you avoid tripping hazards so again from our point of view being able to get into this locker to have lights to have places to hang fenders and lines and steps it is all about the practicality of access just having a locker is not going to be good enough here and again what we've got you can see these hatches the number of storage hatches we've got three just after those trampolines one of them is obviously used for anchor chain but what we do have is this very very large locker i am hoping that we will be able to get the cushions for the forward seating area on there looking at this windlass and this is something this is super important if you can just notice there are four bolts in the corners of the plate that holds the windlass which essentially means it becomes serviceable more often than not if you have a problem with a fouled anchor chain or something else underneath there you are going to want to remove that but also make sure that those nuts and bolts and everything is bolted through is secure and it won't actually come loose so from this point of view we talked very extensively when the 1370 was being designed about being able to remove things being able to remove panels for easy access in potential problem areas and having sailed catamarans having sailed a monohull we know that one potential issue is where you have chain jam or the chain doesn't fall correctly so being able to take this whole windless and, and associated panel out is something which i really really am glad to see so that is the middle hatch the middle compartment in the foredeck of the 1370 and then moving on we have another hatch that we can see where again it's shallow but we'll be able to get storage in there again let's have a quick spin round on these trampolines and i want to kind of talk about the longer on here a couple of just features firstly we have as you can just see in this drone shot there is a cleat for actually the anchor bridle or for mooring balls we have had so many problems with different catamounts in anchoring so this anchoring box that moves forward where we can allow ourselves to stow both the bridle and the anchor super important and this area here moving forward i am not sure whether this is used for the kate winslet and leonardo dicaprio style titanic reproduction scene but it is where the um, bowsprit will come from and when we are flying spinnakers or asymmetrics it looks like a pretty simple area and a very stable area to be able to kind of use that to get your tack lines in but i am very very excited to see how this area all develops the deck is coming on very very well now it seems from this point of view that now we've got those dolphin watching steps now that everything is in place it is simply a question of assembly and so as we spin around with this drone shot we can see that there is honestly a huge amount of progress everything is taped up now and then what you will see as you walk around the boat is lots of tape lots of brown paper just because the next installation they may need to make sure that everything is protected from scratches or marks the placement of some of the solar panels where they're going to go we've got both solid and flexible panels in this area we are looking at 1980 watts of solar and all the calculations that we have done prior for the last few or two or three years show us that the almost two kilowatts of solar with those master volt alternators mean that we have got enough power we've got enough energy from renewables and from those engines a lot of power going in so our power requirements are pretty humble but we absolutely believe that we've got enough there so again a good look around the 1370 it is coming on well and i look forward to getting back next week to filming some more because all the fiberglass work has been done, all the inserts are in. But now what you've got is the need to get hole one, get all the cabinetry done. As I walk down here, a lot of things are being delivered that have been made in the other factory. And that is where most of the woodworking occurs. So for instance, what I have here 
all wrapped up like a, a present for Christmas or Tet, is a drawer front. And these are all CNC milled. As we discussed in a previous episode about carpentry, all that milling has been done. Now the carpentry station that is underneath the boat and all the carpentry stations around hulls one and two, a lot of the carpentry, a lot of the woodworking items, a lot of the, this is being shipped from the other factory. And from the other factory, it is now being unwrapped and installed. So Seawind have two factories in Vietnam. The one at Cat Lai, which is this one, is where the 1370 and 1600 are being built, but all of the woodworking is done off-site in the Goa Moy factory. And you can see that there are piles and piles of cabinets and drawer fronts. So as I have alluded to you before, it is now, we are now in a process of actual just assembly rather than construction. Just because there have been delays here, it does not mean that everything else, the other factory has not been working overtime in making sure that smaller items like drawer fronts, like inserts in fiberglass and wood are all like ready to be installed. This is the base for the table, one of the tables on the boat. I think it's actually the saloon table. Again, all gastra adjustable. So it turns into a berth everything from midway up in Hanoi. And if you've seen our previous episode, the stainless is absolutely beautiful. They've obviously got to pull in all the fixed windows there and they're doing a lot of work on the fiberglass there to make sure that it's prepared to take to bond those windows in. But as I move past hole one and take you into the kind of area between the holes, you will see that now everything is now geared towards woodwork. So it's quite dark under here, but you can see this station. Carpentry station, carpentry station, three carpentry stations, as well as all the wood supplies. These carpentry stations, ash parts, everything to be oiled and sanded, and a dedicated team working, I would say underneath the boat, but let's just say underneath and around the boat, making sure that as the carpentry and the woodworking parts come shipped from the other factory, the larger pieces of marine ply and the larger pieces of ash-faced ply, which actually form the outer aesthetic part for the cabins, are all ready to be ins installed. So hole number one, well on the way to being completed. And I, hopefully like you, are super excited about this whole process. And so everything now is based on fit out, internal fit out of wood, with wiring done, plumbing done, and everything else getting done, it is really, really interesting to see. Now that we've moved to this, I think probably, you know, we're gonna have a fitted, completed inter internal kind of like boat, probably within the next month. So super excited. So I hope you enjoyed that again. It creeps forward so slowly, so tantalizingly, but we are almost there and we will soon, I think by Christmas, have a boat that we can actually whiz around and see almost complete. I hope you enjoyed that episode. I will be back next week with, again, more boat building from Saigon, more life in Saigon. I hope wherever you are, you're enjoying your days. I will see you again soon. Take care. Goodbye.